Hey guys, welcome to another episode of El Jefe Shop Shop. This week I'm working on the Merc engine and fitting a TR6060 to it. So, like I said in the intro, this episode I've got the M156 out of the C63 AMG and I'm trying to transform that into having a manual transmission behind it. So these never came out with a the manual, they only came out with the 7 or 8 speed autos. Um, so we've got a TR6060 and we're going to try and make that fit onto the back. So I filmed this many, many months ago. Um, I don't really know when I was supposed to be sharing this with you. I was hoping to get more done, um, but it's sort of been a project that's been put on the shelf. So. I hope you enjoy. Uh, it is completely unrelated to everything else I've been doing in the last few weeks, but I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. So let's get into it. So a few months ago I sent off a few bits to Melbourne to an engineer and he has sent me back this parcel. So let's unwrap it and I'll show you what it's all about. So it's a reasonably big parcel, uh, but that's what I actually sent to him. So the exciting part is this bit right here. So it's actually a small piece, but I had to give him the other bits so that he can measure everything properly. So I'll keep unwrapping it and I'll show you what he's made. So this is what I sent to the guy in Melbourne. This is the flex plate from the M156 uh, AMG 6.3 litre V8 engine. So this is for an auto, obviously. And then I also sent him this, which is the flywheel from the TR6060, which we bought in the episode when I bought the VN wagon. So LS flywheel. Mercedes flex plate and he's made me this so heaps of holes obviously but this is an adapter to bolt the flywheel to the flex plate to the engine all right so imagine this is sitting on the back of the engine you got the uh, eight bolts here ignore that one eight bolts so this is the back of the engine the M156 uh, Mercedes-Benz engine so then we have this first section of adapter so this side goes into the back of the crank as the converter would and then you line up the eight holes like that somewhere there so you line up the eight holes like that then you bolt this to the crank with these eight holes and then these bolt holes here are threaded so then you bolt this adapter piece which centers on there very nicely so much so I can't get it on with one hand. So then you put bolts through here and bolt it to the first part of the adapter. And then the flywheel goes on top of here and bolts through the flywheel into these holes, which are threaded and drilled in the LS pattern. And then this size in here is the correct size for the pilot bearing. And this size here is the correct size for the center bore of the flywheel. So I'll put that back together, I'll use both hands and show you what it looks like when it's all set up. So it'll look something like this when it's installed on the engine. So you can see the flex plate, the two adapters and then the flywheel. So obviously your clutch goes on here and then your bell housing comes in from the back with the gearbox and everything. The input shaft goes into here with your bearing. So this acts as the back of the LS crank and then the other end of this, which you can't see because it's sitting on the cardboard, has a little dowel just in there where my finger is that dowel goes into the back of the crank on the mercedes engine so this makes us be able to bolt a tr6060 to the back of the merc engine so now i just need to make a bell housing adapter and we're in business so the reason this is such a big space so this is about 50 mil is because this flex plate actually sits in the back of the engine so where the bell housing bolts for the auto trans on the mercedes engine is actually about here so then when you put the TR6060 onto this flywheel which comes probably a little bit past the flywheel and the Mo uh, Merc engine comes a little bit past the flex plate I didn't want to run into any issues and have 10 mil for an adapter so I should end up having 20 or 30 mil still to make up an adapter so that's the next plan but this allows me to actually center everything and bolt a clutch to the back of the Merc engine so I'm going to run it like this and then depending on how the engine reacts a uh, long way down the track obviously I may cut these off and machine this down and make the flywheel a whole lot lighter uh, depending if it revs happier if it needs more weight or less weight but for now I'll just leave it like this 
and the plan is to use the Mercedes starter motor with the uh, ring gear off of the flex plate. So that's what I've been working on in my spare time. Just uh, drew this all up, sent him the plans and then sent him the parts and he checked everything over, uh, fixed a few of my mistakes and then sorted it out for me. So thank you very much uh, Travis Hammond, Hammond Engineering. Absolute champ. It's so satisfying. So what depth is that? Uh, 2.6. Yep. Is that sort of like the max that you'd want to cut in one uh, go? So or? normally in this material, I cut about 50% of cutter width. Yep. So it's a 5mm cutter. Yep. Um, so yeah, 2.5mm depth of cuts. Yep. Um, some materials, like obviously because I don't know what sort of, like what this was going to machine like. Yep. There are some aluminiums that machine really nice and you can go to like 20mm cut depth. But, like even with a five mil bit. Uh, yeah, some stuff. Like if you're doing uh, not full cutter contact, so we're doing 100 percent cutter width. Yeah. Because you're just cutting a groove. Yeah. But if you're going to cut like, like an edge, an edge, you go 50 percent wide, you could go a lot deeper. Okay. So if you were just like facing something, you could go heaps deeper. Yeah. Yeah. All right. clip you would have seen is this getting machined so that was a few days ago so this hole is exactly the same size as that so that actually fits really snug in there so I just got a little rubber hammer it'll just tap in so it's real nice and then this is the TR6060 six speed out of a VEVF Commodore so this is the one we picked up when we went and got the VN uh, wagon from Melbourne so I got this from my mate Lee and it came with a clutch and a flywheel so this is some direct clutch masters or something along those lines, some crazy clutch. Um, twin plate, twin disc, or whatever you call it, and a light and flywheel, which I'll lighten even more down to here eventually, because it's a really heavy setup at the moment. So I've just got all that bolted up. Now I want to try and put that lot in there, put the bell housing on the top, get the gearbox in, lined up with everything, and the bell housing on, pushing, everything pushing on each other, and it will center everything. And then I can copy the bell housing onto this piece of metal. So the plan is to bolt this to the bell housing and then do the same thing with another piece to the engine and then bolt the two pieces of metal together. So hopefully I don't stuff this up because there's about $100 there in metal. So you can see how well that fits. That's actually in the metal. It won't go any further, so. I don't want to thrash on it because I don't want to ruin anything so I'm just being really gentle to try and get it to level lower down so I want to get that flywheel almost flat with the aluminium. Something exactly like that. So the second it got square, it fell through. Pretty cool. Shout out to Aiden. This is sick. I've just laid the bell housing on top of the flywheel just to see how we went. So I measured this really roughly, um, and the hole is in the center, and we're bloody close. But this doesn't matter because we're not going to use this one, we're going to use the one on the engine, so worst case that doesn't matter. Or we just turn this sort of 45 degrees on the piece of metal, and it fits with heaps of room. So probably do that, but we'll see how we go. So just looking at this, I'm going to get the gearbox up this way, and sit it into the bell housing. So I might use my brain and use the engine crane. So I'm using my brain, getting Emily to use the crane, and we just hooked it up with some ratchet straps. So we're just getting the input shaft past the top of the bell housing. We'll bring the crane in and then lower it down into the clutch. So we got the gearbox onto the bow housing again. So you can see it's nice and flush. And the clutch is in there, and the flywheel is in there, and the flywheel adapter is in there and the flywheel adapter is centering the piece of aluminium so in theory this should be perfectly plumb and square because the aluminium is nice and thick 
supported, bell housing square, input shaft square, everything square. So it should be really good. I've just traced around it quickly, just so I can make sure I've got the right orientation if I somehow knock this over. So now what I want to do is drill all these holes out for the bell housing where you would have originally bolted it to the LS. So I'm going to just drill through those somehow. I don't know if I've got the right size drill bits or not, but drill through those, bolt it to this aluminium plate, and then that's pretty much it until I get the other half done and then I can put the plates together, work out where the holes overlap and don't overlap, and copy it across. So it has to be really crucial. Um, I really don't know if this is going to work, but uh, worth a shot. Um, I'm no engineer, obviously. Otherwise I'd be using a machine and not my pencil and a drill, but here we are. So I've gotten all the holes drilled, and then I just pulled the gearbox off, so that's over there. So we've got all the holes drilled for the bell housing. So now just take this off, we have a perfect pattern. So now, trace around the flywheel, which I've already done. Um, I'll take the flywheel off, put the bell housing back on, and then trace around the inside of the bell housing, so we know where the outside and the inside are. And then when I do the opposite with the Merc motor, then I can know what will overlap and what we have to cut out and what we can thicken to make it all line up. Pretty good. Um, a lot scarier than it looks, but everything lined up really well, so I'm quite happy with that. So with my lesson with Aiden the other day, I know that the router can cut the aluminium, which was given a little test just here. And I know that I shouldn't cut more than half of the cutter width. I'm doing a full cut which is what I'm doing so I've just poked out the end of the router a little bit and given it a little test so this is before I put this um, straight edge in so now I'll just go back through it with the straight edge and route along here do the same on that end and then go a little bit deeper and make my way through the aluminium and then when I get to this curve I'm gonna have to come up with something a bit more creative as you can see I tried with the jigsaw but this whole cut here took the same length, amount of time as that cut there so Give this a go with the router and see how we get along. So that actually worked really well. Uh, this side was my first go, so it's a bit rough. And this side was my second go. And as you can see, it's heaps better. So I'm just going to try and do this curve somehow, which is going to be a bit entertaining. But we'll give that a go and then go on to the other side, which is just a straight line, so that side should be easy. So the reason I'm doing all of this is because the aluminium plate didn't actually fit into the back of the engine. So I need this clearance here for the sump because um, it comes out past the back of the engine and I need this clearance here for the intake manifold because it's actually past the back of the engine so once this is all trimmed I'll still have a big chunk here and then the big circle and then a big chunk here so I can go the outside bolt holes and then these ones should pick up on the inside bolt holes inside that circle it's just here that I'm worried about with the sump clearance so I could probably do that and then come down here but I'll just get the whole bit out and be done with it makes sense to make a Mercedes part with a Mercedes part. So this is the C63 front brake rotor. So it's a little bit too big a diameter. So this is only a little bit under what I need. So I'm actually measuring uh, from the outside of the router to the edge of the cutting disc, cutting bit. So that's actually 42 mil, which is this here is only 40. It's 42 in the middle and it's 40 here. So it's gonna be a little bit wider than it needs to out here, come in a bit and then go out wider again. So I'll cut that using that as the tracing guide and then if I need to I can trim it later with a um, flap disc on a grinder or re-router or whatever. So I've just done the first pass uh, at 2mm or whatever you want to call it. So as you can see it's a little bit wider here, comes in, takes off the entire line and then goes a bit wider out here. So that'll be fine, I'll just work my way deeper and deeper on each pass and then this piece will come free and then if I need to, which I doubt it, I can just trim this up. But once this is all drilled anyway, I'm going to clean it up anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Well, that took forever. So I got about halfway through this cut and broke the bit. And none of the other bits I had were the same. So I had to use a whole bunch of different bits and slowly go back and forth until I got all the way through. And then when I got all the way through, I used the uh, flat cut, I don't know what it's called, um, to go back over and clean it up. So it's quite a fair bit in from that line, unfortunately. But this bit's obviously wider still, remember? And then this it's, it's in from the line again, so lost probably two or three mil the whole way around, but it's reasonably smooth. Um, I did have to do about 20 passes, hence the scratching. So 
that's done, there's a bit of a pain in the bum. There's the other bit. So now I just need to do that top section, and then I can start drilling this. So I decided to use my brand new flush bit for this. So I've got that far, and the bearing on the end exploded. So that's awesome. So now I can't trace, I have to use the uh, side of the router as the square again, which is a huge pain in the ass. So that was the best one I could buy really. So <laughs> it's really annoying to only get like, I don't know, eight inches in and it's exploded. So the bit itself is fine, just the bearing in the ends knackered. But the wind's also picked up, which is great because I have aluminium filings everywhere. So they're gonna go all across the yard and it started raining. So that's me done for today, which is a real pain in the ass. It's just aluminium going everywhere. Awesome. So I have to cut the rest of this with the router bit again, but use the router to square it off at that 40 mil like I was doing when I did the curve, which who knows how that's gonna go. I've gone through so many router bits today. It's a bit of a learning curve, but it's a frustrating one. So what makes me even more annoyed about that flush bit uh, bearing exploding is I was going to flush cut the outside of this bell housing. So now I can't do that unless I buy another one, but at $30 a pop, I don't really want to get you know, six inches in and blow it up again. So I was just going to trace along here and cut it out. There goes that idea. Lesson number one. Just use the right tool the first time. These jigsaw blades made this take it five minutes. So I could have done that whole side in 10 minutes yesterday, and then this side in 10 minutes, and then I could have just quickly routed it, and we would have been done. Instead of stuffing around all day yesterday with the router. Oh well, live and learn. Let's cut the other one out. So this is part two. This is the piece for the bell housing. So I'll unbolt it and then cut roughly outside the line with the jigsaw, bolt the bell housing back on and then flush cut with the router. And I'm only doing this because I know that the other piece is smaller than the diameter of the bell housing. So I've just unbolted the bell housing and laid the Merc side to the top of the bell housing side. So as you can see, the top bolt doesn't fit. I already knew that. I may have to cut off the gearbox. And then the bottom two are very close. So I'll probably end up having to cut this out some more and then have a nut and a bolt on the back of that one. Everything else all fits within this square. So I can cut the bell housing pattern out with no, like no worries. And then once I get to the fitting stage, then I can weld them together and sort it all out. So I've gotten a bit of it cut out here, and I've got cut to about where the earmuffs are. But it started pissing down again, so it's time to go inside. So that took about an hour and a half to cut that out. Finally done. So now the plan is to bolt that to the bell housing, get it all nice and square and centered, and then run the flush trim router bit around the outside of the bell housing, which will make this exactly the same as the front of the bell housing. But that's for tomorrow, we're gonna go to work. So I'm not sure what I filmed last, but I've just got the bell housing bolted to the aluminium plate and I'm running the flush cut route a bit along the edge. So I cut this out with the jigsaw, got it reasonably close and now just trimming it off. And it's going really well. So I've done to here, all the way through to here. So that's really good. So now I'm just going to take one of these, these two bolts out, put them in this spot and this spot and then I can do that half, pull that third and then keep working my way around until I've done the whole thing. So I finally finished routing the bell housing plate. As you can see, it came out really good. So I'm probably spending way too much time on this, but I'm super excited. Can't believe this works so well. Super stoked with how it came out. There's a few little issues uh, where the router slipped. But that's about it. There's only one or two spots. Looks so good. Yeah, boy. All right, so that is part one of the AMG 2 TR6060 transmission adapter kit episode. Uh, there will be another part two at some point. Uh, like I said, this has been a bit of a shelved project, so I don't know when I'll get around to it, but it will happen eventually, and hopefully it all fits and works together. So look out for that one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.